All right, these videos are going to be uh, a companion to the ridiculously big number videos, um, or, and or a add-on to the videos I just recently did about uh, it was called To Infinity and Beyond, um, and it's a really quick introduction, but more technical uh, certainly than the To Infinity and Beyond videos to the idea of ordinal numbers. Um, the classic reference for this is Paul Hamas's book, Naive Set Theory, um, a very accessible book to what's often a forbidding subject, um, set theory, foundations of mathematics. Um, and so you could call these videos uh, extremely naive <laughs> set theory, um, really glossing over a lot of the, the details, trying to get to the idea of ordinals as quickly as possible. Um, by all means, if you like this stuff uh, and you don't find, especially if you don't find this uh, particularly clear, then uh, get Hamas's book. It's a classic. So the idea of set theory is that everything is a set. Everything, everything, everything is a set. It's a beautiful um, distilling. Uh, it's amazing that you can found mathematics on this idea that everything is a set. Not just stuff you already have you collect into a set. It's the stuff you already had without you knowing it. It actually can be expressed as a set. So a set just means put together some stuff um, in a bag. Um, the bag metaphor is supposed to imply that the order doesn't matter yet. It will, it will matter later. Um, you can't repeat things. You can't have like a comma a comma b. That wouldn't do anything new. That'd just be the same thing as a comma b. So if you already have some stuff around, you can just put it uh, with, inside the curly braces and you make a set of those objects. Um, but you can also have a set whose elements are sets. So you could have the collection of sets. So say you start with a, b, and c, or let's say Alice, Bob, and Charlie. You could look at all the different pairs you could make out of those. Oh, okay, A and B, B and C, A and C. That's three different ways you could select two things. You can put those into uh, a bag. Like you could write these on slips of paper and put those into a bag. So that's a, a collection of sets or a set whose elements are themselves sets. Um, and then you can go further. You can have triple nested curly braces, quadruple nested curly braces, as many as you want. There's no limit. So the simplest set is the empty set. It has no members whatsoever. Um, and that seems a little weird to some people to realize that that might be a good thing to think about. But basically, just think of it as an empty bag or an empty box. It's just an empty box. Um, and it's actually surprisingly useful. And it will be the, the foundation of everything uh, we do, actually. So you can have a simple special symbol for it, zero the line through it, um, or just braces with nothing inside. OK. So finite numbers. Um, let me refer a little bit to the. Um, the to infinity and beyond videos, I talk about cardinal and ordinal approaches to counting. Um, cardinal is where you compare things by lining, by putting them together in terms of a one-to-one -one correspondence. Ordinal approaches is more about lining them up in order. We'd like both approaches to work for finite numbers in the absolute simplest way. We want to create finite numbers under this maxim of that every single thing is a set. Okay, so here's one thing we'd like for for the cardinal approach is the number three, whatever set we create to represent the number three should be a set that we think deserves to be called, say, say it has three elements. It should not violate our intuition about how many elements a finite set has. Ordinal, um, what we need is a very simple successor function. Um, some function that creates the next number, basically plus one, but it's even more basic than addition. So I like to just use s um, as this. Halmos uses a little, um, just like a superscript plus for this. Okay, I need to have some very simple function that goes to the next number. So that's going to put them in order. It's going to be able to create the next thing. It's also the foundation of induction and recursion, which we'll talk about more later. Um, so here's the start. It's just beautiful. Um, and I, I think this might actually even be due to von Neumann. I think this, um, which is pretty late compared to like Cantor and, and uh, Zermelo, Frankel, all those people in the turn of the century. Um, but I think this exact construction I'm going to show really actually uh, is due to von Neumann. Um, so we start by defining zero to be the empty set. It's funny because. Um, Computer scientists uh, often use this zero with a slash notation to mean zero simply because they don't want it to be confused with an O. Well, um, usually mathematicians want to, to make a distinction between the number zero and the empty set, um, and so don't really like the fact that computer scientists write their zeros this way. But when you go down to fundamentals, it's actually, there's no disagreement um, if you use this way of constructing things. It's not the only way. If you use this way of constructing things, we're going to define zero to be the empty set. Okay, Cardinal, cardinality speaking, it certainly has zero elements, so that's good. So um, an empty box should represent zero because it's empty. It has nothing in it. It has zero elements in it. Okay, It's also the simplest possible set, 
So it's a nice base case for recursion and induction and the idea of successor, which we use for ordinals. Okay. Now, we want one, remember we want the cardinal notion to be okay. Um, so we want one to, to be one, a set with one element. Hmm, what could we put inside it? Well, the simplest thing to put inside it is an empty box. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We define one to be the set with just the number zero inside. But remember the zero, the number zero was the empty set. Um, and so we just have, and a way to say it is it's a box with an empty box inside. Okay, the outer level, the outer box, how many things does it have in it? Oh, it has one thing in it. What does it happen to be? It happens to be an empty box. Well, that's okay. That's nice and simple. And in particular, it has one thing in it, that empty box. Okay. So that's super cool. It's just it's just curly braces. There's nothing else. It's, it's, it's great. It's just great that from in terms of the um, this foundation of mathematics, this way of founding mathematics, it's nothing but curly braces. It's amazing. Okay. What about two? Okay. Let's find the only set we can create from these ingredients that seems to have intuitively two elements. Okay. So we're just going to put the the empty box in it and that box with an empty box inside it in it. Okay. We're going we, to you can see we're sort of starting to nest the boxes here. So it's just the set with 0 and 1 in it, or if we unpack that, it's uh, the set with the empty set and that singleton, which happened to, whose element happened to be the empty set inside it. And again, you could just expand it all in terms of a bunch of curly braces. And I guess you need commas too. Curly braces and commas, that's all. So in general, here's what we do. So you, so you might wonder about my, my uh, consideration that we need a simple successor function that systematically creates the next number. Is there a, a pattern here that systematizes? Absolutely. What we're doing is that given a number n, it's going to be a set with basically not a whole lot of stuff when you come down to it, a bunch of nested empty boxes. And the next number is you just take all the numbers you've already created up through n, and then you just put them all together in a new bigger box. And if we use the union operation, you probably know what the union operation is if you're watching this video. Um, it just means put in, put together all the stuff that was in n, which was 0, 1, 2, up through n minus 1, the previous number, and then just add one more thing, and that's the, that, that thing put in a box. So it's really cool. You just take um, all the things you had before, leave them unboxed and it's separate, then take a new copy of it, put it in a box, and then put them all together in a box. That's all you ever do. Okay, so this is really a, a good way to think about it, is that the next number in line is just all the numbers less than that number. It's the set of all the numbers less than that number. Okay, um, that's it. That's how you create um, all the finite numbers in a way that each number definitely will seem to intuitively have, uh, the number n will be a set with n elements in it, so that satisfies the, the cardinal consideration, and we've got this incredibly nice way just the idea of unioning with and curly bracing um, to create the next thing in line. And in the next video, I'll talk about how um, you go to infinity and then beyond.